Welcome to the Bloody Mary podcast, where we talk about all things horror while drinking a Bloody Mary. I'm Jesse. And I'm Tammy. And we are totally married. Mm -hmm. We got our Bloody Marys. And tonight we are ranking the top five best and worst horror horror films films of of 2022. 2022. Yeah, this is uh, this is like my favorite podcast to do podcast segment. Yeah, I love the year wrap ups. They're so much. It's just fun. It is fun and get to look back and be like, oh, we saw that this year because sometimes I forget. I know. It's cool. Yeah. Well, um, before we get started, we have merch. We do. We have shirts and mugs and all that shit. And hats, and they're pretty cool. So yeah. go on our website and check it out. Yep. BloodyMarriedPodcast.com. Yeah. We also have an Amazon wish list where we do. We, there's things on there you can get for us like Bloody Mary mixes, um, more expensive things like microphones that we really need and stuff like that, and small things, movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And speaking of... Uh, Someone got us some stuff. I know. That's awesome. So, Woo. Uh, if you're watching, Octavia, you can see. Octavia Lewis bought us this really cool mix that we're drinking right now, Bloody Revolution, pickle zest. Yes. Uh, she also got us some stirring spoons, um, uh, Blu-ray, can't remember what it was, and some spicy dill pickle. Final Destination Blu-ray. Ribbing salt. So thank you, Octavia. Yes, thank you um, so much. We love you. She has a small business called In- Intertribal Beauty, and she's also a makeup and hair artist that she's uh, worked on uh, a bunch of my films. Yeah. Most notably, she did makeup and hair on the original Night of the Witch trailer. And recently, last year, she did makeup and hair for my short film, 13 Callaway Place. She did. So I'll leave links to um, her business and uh, some of her stuff. Yeah. She below. also did my makeup for our wedding. Oh, yeah. That thing, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Remember when that, we got married? That's like third. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> like making movies is more important than the one. Okay. Yeah. But she was there, too. But Bye. anyways, uh, thanks, Octavia. Yes. Thank and you. And then if you decide to buy us some stuff, we'll plug you as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, are you ready to get into it? Yeah, uh, best and worst films of 2022. So, let me I just want to start off by saying that this has been the best year for horror in recent years, and for sure, since we've been doing this podcast. Yeah, I think no matter no matter what you think of the films this year, the films that we're going to talk about, we got tentpole franchise films like Halloween, Hellraiser, Scream, Texas Chainsaw, many more, a lot of original films. And that's as a horror fan, that's really cool. It is. Um, and this year, I think also we have some really high highs and some really low, low lows. lows. Like for us, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. I, I, I yeah, as this is gonna be fun to get into. It is. Um, yeah, so I just this year is really cool for horror, and I think it's probably because of coming out of COVID, mm-hmm. everyone's like, all right, let's fucking make some, make some shit, and horror is back. It is. I don't know if it went anywhere, but it feels like it's back. It feels so. like it has a little bit of a revival <clears throat> this year, mm-hmm. which is nice. It does feel like we got to see more yeah, definitely. than normal. Yeah. Um, so let's just get into it. We're going to start with our, our favorite films of the year, our yes. top five favorite flicks of the year. Also, I'd like to say that we are going to try our hardest to do this <laughs> spoiler free. Yes. So if we decide to get into spoilers, we'll let you know. If you're super worried about it, you know, you can just skip ahead and check out our our whatever film. And then if you haven't seen it, skip to the next one. But we're going to try to keep it spoiler free for you this time. Yes, we're going to try real yeah. hard. <laughs> really, really hard. So um, our number five best film of the year is... Black Phone. Black Phone, directed by Scott Derrickson. Um, what did you think of Black Phone? I really liked it. And yeah. I, Ethan Hawke's character, he did so good. Mm-hmm. And the mask being able to take off the different expressions. Yeah, the masks and, by Tom Savini. He, oh, he did the masks. I think I thought those were those a really, were really great part fucking of fucking rad. Yeah. And definitely. I liked, the kids were creepy when they had the, the kids show up and the little sister was fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. I liked her a lot. Yeah. Um, I just, it was a really entertaining. It was creepy. He did a really good job. I really enjoyed it yeah, a lot. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, the positives for that, um, Ethan Hawke's performance for sure. I think the kids' performances, especially mm-hmm. um, the the sister. It was a sister. It's been mm-hmm. a minute. Yeah, she was really good. Uh, there were some a really cool jump scare moments where there we was. both jumped in the theater. Uh, very tense moments. And like you said, the masks by Tom Savini were really, oh, really creepy, really clever. 
Um, and the negatives about this is for me, it's I read the book, right? Like, like and so, so and I did not. I, you know, reading is cool, but sometimes it backfires when you read a book and the book's really good, and then you see the movie. I really, this is one I wish I hadn't have read the book. I just wish I would have saw the you film. Wish you would have saw. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. That happens a lot. So, so this was like, uh, this was like, uh, um, and uh, yeah, no, it's a good film. It is a good yeah. film. What's good. why it's our number five? <laughs> good time in the theater. <laughs> yeah. Um, number four. All right. Let's so our number right four along. is Day Shift. Day Shift. Um, this was entertaining as shit. It was so fucking uh, entertaining. Directed by J.J. Perry, Day Shift is a Netflix original film. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's mixed between like Men in Black and Dust Till Dawn. It's, it is. It, yeah. <laughs> It's just a uh, guy's uh, hunting vampires for cash. There's yeah. like a yeah. Jamie Fox and uh, Dave Franco are hilarious duo. Yes, I yes, have yes, to say, yes. you get some Snoop Dogg. Yeah, who was Snoop Dogg with a was, minigun? Yes, I mean it, dressed and as cowboy. a cowboy. <laughs> So, that was so great. I love yeah. that Snoop Dogg's like, I want to be a cowboy. Yeah. So the inter <laughs> the entertainment value for this one is off the charts. Yes. Uh, for sure. Like the positives for me, highly entertaining. Uh, the fight scenes are really cool. Oh, and the just the vampires alone. Yeah. Were they were really cool. Yeah. I because you know we've got some vampires in the last you know fifteen years that were just not. We, we've vampires. got some vampires that sucked. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that we, have we, sucked. And some so Twilight these were... vampires. We had some, even like, a, what was that shitty movie that we did our worst on? It was Bill Murray, fucking. Uh, oh, I don't. The Dead Don't Die. I, I blocked that Dust out. Dust vampires. I hate yeah. <laughs> I left that movie. I walked out. Um, yeah, it was really, really fun. The fight scenes were really dope. Mm -hmm. um, it was funny. Uh, yeah, that was a really entertaining film. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Jamie Foxx, he was on it on this one. Sometimes he can be a little miss, but I really enjoyed him. Like you said, James Franco. No, um, Dave Franco. Oh, well, oh. Dave. Yes, Dave. <gasps> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dave. And this uh, movie introduced me to the actress Carla Souza. Mm -hmm. She was the, I think that's how you say her last name. She was the head vampire. Um, and I'd never seen her in anything before. And I don't think she does much horror, but I would love to see her do more horror. Mm -hmm. Um and and for negatives or this, I I don't know I I don't really have any. I I didn't. So have why any. isn't this was... higher? <laughs> this is why isn't this higher on the list? Well, because there's other um, ones that we like better. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but... well, okay. A negative is Netflix original. I would have loved to have seen this in the theater. Yeah. That's like one negative. I mean, it's cool that it's on Netflix, but the theater experience adds so much to a film. It does. Uh, so that's one thing I wish I would have saw this in the theater. Yeah, but, but otherwise, if it's you, super fun. If you haven't seen it and you're just looking for a fun popcorn action horror flick, check it out. You got Snoop Dogg with a fucking minigun, right? So it, that's just fun. Just that alone, yeah. Like you have to. And Dave Franco's a dork puking on himself, right? <laughs> or he pissed, so, him, he pissed himself. himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just their comic back and forth was just so funny. <laughs> I know. I, I really hope that they do a sequel. They should. Uh, yes, that would be fun. Night shift. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. Uh, number three, our, our, our third favorite film of the year is... Terrifier 2. Terrifier 2, directed by Damien Leone or Leone or Leon. I don't know. Whichever <laughs> one. We're Leon. D. Leon. So what did you think? I, what are your thoughts? Um, You know, I thought this was fantastically directed. I think this is a director that knows his budget and knows how to use it mm -hmm. for sure. Um, you can see every penny. I don't know how much he had, but you can tell he put it in the right places. Yes. I hate when they, you know, they had a smaller budget and they wasted on stupid <laughs> shit. Yeah. There's, there's which, one. Which our, we'll talk yeah. about later. But <clears throat> um, I think it was perfect casting. Um, I think all around perfect casting, especially the main actress. She was so badass. She was badass. So sexy and just such the perfect person for that role. Um, Agreed. I, I think I, I I like the gore, and also I don't see. This is where, this is one of those films where I see it and I know it's good, but my taste, uh, it doesn't really hit my taste palette with as far as they go with the gore. Right. I don't like the extreme body torture torment gore. It bothers me. So there's right. there's especially one scene in this where 
Oof. the main character goes to town I, I, and just it's like just killer. it is just a gore fest yeah. and he just it's it disturbed me it wasn't gory it just disturbed me it was me. disturbing um w which you know that's the reaction you're trying to get it's just a lot of the kills weren't my taste mm -hmm. but i respect the shit out of them for sure so. i you know i like the gore yeah so the kills were right up my alley yeah, and the yeah. gore was my taste yeah yeah you like the horrific <laughs> real torturous gore and and i like the more fun gore so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um we'll just skip past that part uh, uh the main actress uh her name is uh, lauren laver la vera and she played sienna she uh, was really great yeah. and i really liked um the storyline through it too and you get mm. a little backstory lore type a little bit with uh, Art, the clown. Yeah. And you get to kind of see behind that curtain a little bit. Yeah, that was my love-hate with this. It kind of, it, the, the lore uh, bleeds between the lines of my positive and negative. I like that the lore, the, all the lore building, but then we get into like a few of the negatives I have with the film is I think there was too much lore that none of, um, let me re rephrase this. None of the lore that they introduced mm -hmm. was resolved or explained. That's true. So it's like you have Art survived, so he's supernatural. There's a little supernatural clown demon. There's he di he gets reborn through the vagina. Uh, his head is born through the vagina of a past victim of his that survived. <laughs> um, there's a father who apparently knows of Art the Clown and the good and evil in the world. And there's a daughter who has mystical powers. There's a magical sword. Right. Uh, and none of that was explained. That's which, true. which leads up to, you know, probably because he's making a third. Right. But also, I would like some resolution with those plot lines. Uh, I, can I, see I do that. respect the shit out of that. They just, he was like, you know what? I'm going to take Terrifier and I'm going to blend it with Lord of the Rings. <laughs> And it worked. <laughs> it did. <laughs> like, and I'm going to yeah. have it a gore fucking fest. Yeah. I, like I, you thought it, the kills were yeah, yeah. were uh, gory the last time? Mm. Hold my beer. Oh, yeah. I'm about to do it even better. For sure. And the other negative I have, um, it's too long. It is, w watch, it is long. It's like 210 or two something like 218, that. 218. Oh, God. That's even longer than I thought. But watching it, I'm like, I know I can shave 10 minutes off this in editing. Right. Like I know, and I can make the story even better. And I could probably shave 20 minutes off, but I might lose a scene. Uh, but I know that this could have used another pass in editing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, two over two hour horror movie yeah. is is a bit much. For me, but it, it didn't like, feel that way too much. Like it for me it did. For me it felt that way. Yeah. It didn't. There's some you watch that you're like, it's fucking. Are we kidding me? We're still. Yeah, we're still it's like an hour left. Well, it helps if like if you're watching it and you don't like it. Right. But it, this one I liked. But I this one I liked, and I still felt the time. I'm like, mm. ah, you know, I. It's just like you could shave ten minutes off. Right. Easily, easily, easily. Yeah. Yeah. Here. I agree. Yeah. But it was still. Overall, it's a, it's a good film, and I can't wait to see them make a third one. I know. Yeah, he does really good with what he has. You know, like yeah. you said, with the budget, they're yeah. not huge big blockbuster horrors, mm -hmm. and he does it well. Yeah, for so. sure. All right, our number two. Number two. Here we go. We're getting into the top Dun -dun -dun. two. What do you think, you get listeners? If you've listened to us, what do you think our top two are going to be? It's probably not that hard to guess, but <laughs> probably uh, not. Number two film. Second best film of the year is X. X, directed yes. by T West or Ty West, whatever. <laughs> T West, Ty West, whatever West you want to go with. This is a good movie. It was really uh, great. I, I, I love the 70s and I love porn and I, I, <laughs> I love horror. I love 70s porn. <laughs> yeah. And I, I just love, uh, I love films about films. Let's just right. say that. And, and so this is a film about making a porn. Uh, part of the, the, the one of the subplots, but um, I just enjoyed the premise, uh, and then the the directing like matched the 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 seventies really well. It really did, and, and the wardrobe uh, performances were great across the board. Uh, super cool kills. It was refreshing to see an original film because there's so many. Like we said, like it's cool that like you get Halloween's, you get screams, you get a Texas Chainsaw, but it's always nice to see. Something an original new. new movie right. come along and 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 that it, X hit like all the right notes for me. It did. And it not only is it an original, because mm -hmm. we've had original ones, but they've yeah. like 
fell flat or, you know, they weren't that great. But yeah. this one hits all the notes and it really gives you that feel of the 70s. Yeah. Which sometimes when you're watching a movie and it's about the 70s, you're like, it doesn't feel like the 70s. Yeah. Like yeah. this gave you, it felt like the 70s. It mm. felt like um, what they were trying to do in the area of like the porn and stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, and then just not knowing like, what's happening and then all of a sudden you're like oh shit like yeah yeah it was uh, we haven't seen a killer like that in a while in a long while yeah. and also i like the nods to past horror movies yeah for sure like you can watch that movie and you can see that he loves horror yes, and yeah. the love of it runs yeah. throughout you, you so can, that is yes. really great i like that a lot you can see that in this one, and then you can maybe talk uh, about Pearl too. Uh, but you can tell he not only has a love for horror films, but just film, films in general. filmmaking. Yeah, because you can he's he's developed into a very technical director, and and it really helps and heightens these films. It does. Yeah. It was really. I think we were both like, "Damn, that was really good." Yeah, when we got out of the theater. Yeah, like, and when we got out of the theater, we were talking like, "Oh, is this is this number one or not?" And we, right. we talked about it for a second. It's not. It's number two. It came really close. Um, so I, there's not many negatives to this one for me. I think one negative was just nitpicking, like close to the beginning of the film, you could really, t they leave the city and you could totally tell the entire city was digital. Right. Like I didn't need that shot. Right. You, you could have sold it to me with just Without it. a couple buildings. I didn't need a wide of a digital city. Um, but right. yeah, like I said, that's nitpicking and, and the ending. So this is just personal preference too. So we got, when we got out of the theater, I posed you a question. I was like, um, so do you think that this, the killer has been doing this their whole life mm -hmm. or this is a, a more recent thing? Right. And I liked that mystery of it. Uh, but then soon after, we didn't stay for the after credits, we realized that they're making a prequel about the killer. Right. So that mystery doesn't exist. And it, it, yeah, I just, I would have preferred the mystery. Right. And for me, I was like, oh, they do done this their whole life. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a part of you because it deals with. Well, it does. It deals with dementia and things like that. It touches on it. So, also another great example of a movie that completely entertains you, but underneath it, you have some messages about what it's like to be beauty beautiful, and what grow. it's like to age, mm -hmm. um, what it's like to live with dementia a little bit. And what society thinks about beauty and stuff like that. But you have those messages just packed tightly with a very entertaining flick. Agreed. Which, yeah. which I, I can't say that for some of the shit on our, no. our worst list. No. Um, this one did that really well. It did. Yeah. It really did. And all the performances, all the acting oh, yeah. was like super top notch. Mia Goth, Mia Goth is didn't just... even know she was playing two characters. Right. You didn't even know. And then you look, like, oh my God. I think it was like towards the end, I was like, huh? is that her? I, so I can't remember if I even like figured it out in the I movie. I think, I think it was after the fact. I think we figured it out yeah. in the car. Yeah. Or maybe when the credits rolled. Yeah. And then um, uh, Jenny. Jenna Ortega. Jenna Ortega was cool. She's in everything now. I know. She's just in everything. Um, and I, I don't know his name, but there was the the white producer guy in the tidy whiteies. I really liked him. And then Kid uh, Cuddy. Kid Cuddy was rad. And we got to see boobs and Dick. And if Brittany I'm not... Snow. Yeah. Oh yeah, Brittany Snow was in that. Yes, uh, yeah. all of them. We yeah. got we got some Dick. We got boobs. We got all sorts of stuff. And Se it was just great. It Se was seventies porn horror. Seventies porn horror. Loved it. Yeah. Well. All right, Here we're we go. to our number one. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> number one. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, number one favorite horror film of the year is Scream. Scream. Scream 2022. Scream 5, whatever you want to call it. I fucking love this movie. We saw this in the theater Twice. opening night. We saw it the night before. It really opened and it was amazing. And then we went and saw it again in the theater like a few weeks later, just uh -huh. see it again. And I couldn't remember the last time I saw a film in the theater more than more than once. No, I um, I don't think I have in a long time. Yeah, so. dire directed by Matt Olfin and Tyler Gillett, a team. And they are directing uh, the next Scream as well. Uh, but this, it was good. They th This is a really, it, I love the Scream franchise. Yes. And th they did it justice, which was a really hard job because you have to 
give the fans what they want and try to do things a little bit differently. And I thought they pulled it off perfectly. I think they I, did I too. think they, it was a sleek film. Mm-hmm. I think it, the casting was, was pretty amazing. I think the kills were great. Um, there's a lot of gore, but not over the top gore like Terrifier. Right. It was just the there's perfect. It was the perfect amount. Really great kills. Yeah. That. And some fun twists, but also not too many twists. But there was one thing that I, we weren't expecting that I don't think anybody was expecting. You have a, a legacy character shows up that y- you don't think would show up. It'd be like the right. last person that you would imagine would show up in this shows up. Right. Which was uh, one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. Same. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit. Like, everyone in the theater is like, what? Yeah, what? yeah. And I, I just love that it had the throwbacks to the first one. Mm-hmm. Um, and it weaved in what Scream does, which is, you know, uh, what's going on today in in the landscape of horror. Mm-hmm. And, um, and the technology and everything. It just weaved it just perfectly it did yeah it really did and it just made my little scream heart happy i know yeah it made like the the late teen me like giddy in the theater right like i i I felt there was something seeing scream in the theater that it did to my insides that was so (laughs) joyful it was that this hasn't happened in such a long time um yeah that was really cool and uh, negatives um there's there's only one thing and in the moment and shortly after the film, it was fine. But after it sat for a year, they get rid of a legacy character. They do. And uh, I wish they wouldn't have. I wish they would have like like gave it a kill to where maybe they could have lived. But right. they for sure killed the shit oh, out of them. For sure. Yeah. For fucking so, sure. So that's like my only negative, but it still doesn't bring it down. And I still understand why they did it. Right. I yeah. think mine would be like I kind of saw who one of the killers would be like just straight away. I called it when casting happened. Right. You know that. So that was like, eh, but, yeah. uh, but it really didn't matter because I still like that actor. Yeah. And I still love the movie. Yeah. So it really wasn't a big yeah. deal. Well, and Well, one of the, that one of the killers. One of the killers. Not yeah. both of the killers. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The one. It, it was, was easy still... to call because of just who, who ca- casting. Yeah, yeah. Who it was. But. It was just, it made my little heart happy and it was great. And yeah, it's our number one, of course. We love Scream. Yeah. If you listened to us before, you know we love Scream. For sure. So it was great to see everyone who was still alive in the franchise, you know, back. Yeah. Um, yeah. I hope, uh, I hope the next Scream is just as good. We'll see. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. So let's, uh, let's get into the fun stuff, oh. which is the, the shit. The, the dog, shit. the dog shit of the year. <laughs> let let me let me go through these notes here. <laughs> he has like ten pages of notes. I do, and I have one page with one <laughs> one line for each. That's I, it. I come prepared. Okay, yeah, I, I, I prepare am prepared. Things. I am just all up in my brain. Over prepared, I guess. There's nothing wrong with being over prepared. I think it's cute. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right. Let's get into the worst films of the year. All right. Um, like we said, there are some high highs, some really good films, and there's some low lows. And we're going to start with uh, number five, which would be... Bodies, bodies, bodies. bodies. What, what the fuck was this? Okay, what? so first of all, we're in our 40s. It was not aimed for people in their 40s no. because they were just fucking stupid ass kids, and it was boring. This, this movie well, was, was made for teen TikTok girls. That's that, that's what the, who this movie... This is the target audience. Teen TikTokers. Teen TikTok girls is what <laughs> bodies, bodies, bodies is for. They had some funny lines, but yeah, directed by uh, Halen Rain, I think is her name. Oh. well, it that. wasn't good. We were, it, I was so fucking bored. <laughs> sorry, Halen. Let's try again. I'm sorry. I'm not a teen TikToker, so yeah, it didn't yeah. hit. It didn't hit that demographic for me. It was just boring. We we weren't the target demographic for no. this film. Um, <laughs> no, we were not. Okay, well, let's see positives. I love a single location movie. I think that the premise was really cool. I liked that they play this game called Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. One of us is the killer. You have to guess who it is. Right. I like that it's taking place during a storm, that they're in this house. Right. Like the whole setup is cool. The but setup is the cool. The execution sucks my ass. And then you then you go through and you're like, okay, this could be. And then you're like, wait, 
fucking that's it that's what happened what it was is like there was like a hint of oh oh and then no 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 and then no. oh 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 and no no no, no, no. no. that's that was like the whole movie um, and then you're just like really they're just fucking morons yeah. all of them are fucking morons right yeah they they were and yeah the the pacing was just off um hopped up on coke being yeah. stupid you know th- this movie didn't like piss me off like the top three did <laughs> uh it, it just it wasn't for me it was just boring. We were both. I was yeah. bored. You were bored. I was bored. Yeah. Everybody was bored. looking at our wristwatch because we're yeah. in our forties and we wear them. <laughs> yeah. But we don't. But we don't. Ooh. We're like Terrifier two's two hours and this one's a half hour in. I'm like, really? We have <laughs> right, right. Still have more to go. <laughs> yeah. All right. <sighs> Moving on. Um, number four, fourth worst film of the year is Firestarter. Firestarter. What? This is directed by Keith Thomas. Um, one word for this. Boring. Another boring one. Yeah, just boring. Um, but it also disappointing because I really, yeah. I liked the original. Mm-hmm. And in this one was just also lackluster. Yeah. It was just like, it's unforgettable. It's or it's forgettable. For- forgettable, yeah, yeah. And you're just like, what? Yeah, what? I mean, the original, I'd seen it so long ago and I, I remember that was... Uh, way more entertaining, more thrilling, uh, more mysterious. Um, this one was just boring. Uh, I mean, positives are Zach Efron's in it, and he tries with the material. He does he has. try, um, but the material isn't good. The girl actress, she was pretty good. She tries as well. Um, and some of the effects are cool. Some of the fire effects were pretty neat. But uh, this movie was just, in a word, it's boring. And there's not much else to say about it. It's a missed opportunity. And like the whole thing was just drab. Yes. It, drab, boring. It didn't build any suspense. No. It didn't even have funny moments. No. Like bodies, bodies, bodies. At least it had like a couple funny moments. Yeah, yeah. And that's why Firestarter is above that because it's like <laughs> there's nothing. It was just like, yeah, that's it. That's that's it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, that's cool. That's and this was like towards the beginning of the year, and we're like, well, we're off to a good start. Right. <laughs> like, cool. That was great. Well, well, yeah. Don't watch that. Stick with the original. Yeah. Moving stick on. With the original. All right. So these <laughs> these suck so hard. <laughs> the the top three are so bad. Um, like the first the two we just talked about, they didn't anger me. They were just disappointing right, for they were the most part, or they and weren't boring. for me. But these just made me mad, <laughs> and we're like, "What are we watching?" All right, number three, third worst film of the year is Men. Men, wa- directed by Alex Garland. What the fuck was this? What the fuck did I watch? <laughs> All right, what we're go- the fuck? We're gonna start with the positives. Okay. Um, beautifully shot. Beautifully shot. The director of photography, amazing. Um, tone. They kept. The the tone they went for, they kept it through the whole thing. Right. Which was great. Mm-hmm. Tonally the same. Um, performances were pretty good. The actress was great. Yeah. She she took out a lot of emotion, pulled out a lot of emotion. Definitely. Um and, and the task of this one actor to play like, I don't know, seven different characters, I think he pulled that off pretty well. He did. Yeah. And it made did make me want to go live in an English countryside <laughs> because it was very beautiful. We, we yeah. The location was great. Um uh, the negatives is this is just an agenda film and that's it. Yes. And, Nothing and else. And we do not like agenda, f- artsy, we do not like art ha- art house <laughs> horror agenda films. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. It's not our thing. You can Mm-mm. you can have messages, you can have agendas, but please, for the love of fuck, package it in an entertaining thing that we can watch. And that was not it. Yeah. Oh my God. So, we watched so many bad ones back to back and it was just like, <laughs> oh my God. So, so this this movie has one message and it's all males are toxic. And yes. this is this brought up and I was talking with you about it. It's like uh, in improv theater, there's the term for it. It's called yes and. It's where you you come up with a premise and and in order to keep the premise going, some banter, you have to go yes and. You don't stop it and say, no, this doesn't work. Right. You, you know, like... Here, we'll do an example like, hey, Tammy, I'm making pancakes down by the river. You want to come join me? Yes, and? Then you add something to it. And 
And I'll make eggs with it. Yes. And <laughs> we should go hunt something in the woods and find bacon. Yes. We can kill our own bacon. Yeah, Let's do that. Yes. Uh, I've never killed something before, but can you show me how to kill it? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, Anne. It's really yes, easy. Yes, We just did it right here. They did none of that. They were like... Um, Toxic so, masculinity. So th this movie is about every every male is toxic. And then you're like, well, yeah, and what else you got? Oh, that's it. That's, just, that's, that's it. all we got for the movie. Oh. Yeah. Th that was it. It's just yeah. toxic males breed toxic males. That yeah, That is yeah. what, and then has all the types of toxic masculinity you can think of. Yeah. And it's just in her face. And then you have the ending that was just like. <laughs> it, it's so, there's like this horror ish ending. And it. But it to me, what, like yeah. some of the, the effects, I, I, maybe the first effect was cool, yeah. but they did that fucking shit like five times. And then stopped in the middle of it to do a Shakespearean diatribe for like five minutes of, of a monologue of a stage play or something. I don't, it was. And it was. Yeah. Just, no. Yeah. Art house horror with a strong message yeah. that reaches a small group of people is not for us. <laughs> and, and another thing too, like if you take away agenda and all that, um, and this movie lost me because as a viewer, there was nothing that grounded me in reality. Right. So this character, you can't tell if things are in her head. You can't tell if things are real or not. So in turn, for me, I'm not invested into what's happening and I don't care. Because right. you're not telling me what's real and what isn't, and, and what I sh who and what I should be caring about. Right. And in the end, and the ending was just like. Well, the ending's interesting because the ending is like, so her friend shows up and sees the aftermath of some of this stuff right. that you were questioning the whole time. Is this really happening? Is this just metaphor? Is this just for the audience? Right. What's going on? But you have an outside perspective, which I imagine is your grounding. She sees a couple things, and most notably, like a huge blood trail, right. which leads me to believe that one, it it really all happened. And in that case, she came across some like bizarre ancient entity in the woods that fed off of her bizarreness, right. or she just snapped and went insane and killed normal people, which goes against the the whole or message she of just the film. Didn't kill? I mean, she killed toxic men. Just back to back, but then they birthed. I don't. There, there was like a weird ancient creature that was naked. Oh, we got some d dick in this. So dumb. Um, I will Let's... say we've got a lot of dick this year. Yes, there's been more a lot of than dick. we never get. Yes, so never get. the dicks, dicks are coming. Um, not horror film, but I mentioned before on the podcast, but the uh, the, the series Minx on HBO uh -huh. about seventies. Porn magazines, we know th th things I love, 70s and porn. There's dicks <laughs> everywhere in that. It's so I'm great. Saying, it needs to be equal opportunity. Yeah. Um, so yeah, men, uh, not for us. Not for us. And no, not for us. Angry. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> here we go. Number, right. number two. What is number two or second worst film of the year? Okay. They, them. They slash them. Sle Get they it? They slash them. Yes. Directed by John Logan. Oh, this movie. This movie. Okay. This movie really angers me so, so much because it has a really good premise. Like, they have a good idea. They could have. They, they do. They have a good idea. They, they have a really great premise. Uh, boiled down to the basics, the premise is a camp slasher. Right. And you can have a lot of fun with that. Right. And if you want to put a message in it, you can. But this movie is so tonally inconsistent. It does not know what the fuck <laughs> it wants to do. Do we want to be a, a camp slasher? Do we want to be a musical? Because there's a fucking musical break. The, uh, like, okay, kids, sing. But you just bust it out in some glee shit yeah. where you have a choreographed number <laughs> all of a sudden and this is in a this horror middle film. of this fucking movie. The, oh, my God. This is, okay, this is what I think happened. I think this is, mm. I'm going to play some characters here. I think a producer hopped on the bandwagon. So I'm going to be the producer. I'm going to pretend like I'm the director. Producer. Uh, so this gender pronoun thing is pretty popular these days. We should make a movie about the gays. You you in to direct? We got a green lit. It's called They Slash Them. Get it? And then I'm like, uh, okay, I, I guess I'm in. What's, what, you're paying me. So cool. He's like, all right, we got to shoot it in a month. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, you have a script? No. <laughs> 
uh, all right, I'll write something. So I, I write a dramatic thriller and I start shooting it. I cast it and I'm shooting the dramatic thr thriller and I'm sending my producer the dailies maybe mm -hmm. after a week. And then he gets back to me and he's like, this is too dramatic. Uh, what's popular these days? Hamilton, do a musical number. I'm like <laughs> on the phone like, what? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, you heard me, do it. Right. <laughs> he's, he's like fat guy, cigar. <laughs> I don't know what this voice is, but... <laughs> So then I go to my like crew. I'm like, uh, I guess we have to shoot a musical number. And then we shoot that and send it back. And then we're getting through more of them. He's like, those slashers are popular. Scream. Can you give us some some kills? Turn it into a slasher flick. Yes, but and, not and, too gory. And, and, and I'm like, <laughs> uh, well, I, I, okay, but uh, our budget is gone for any kills. And he's like, all off screen kills. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. Let I, them use their imagination. <laughs> then I go back to the crew and I'm like, guess we're a slasher now. <laughs> we can do cool, cool, cool kills? No, nah, they're all off screen. Cool, great. So that's, I feel like that's how this movie went. I feel like it was. So, like a lot of brains going back and forth and a lot of producers being like, turn it into this, turn it into that. Because there's no way you would read this script and be like, this is a, cons we can shoot this. This is th There's a musical in here. It's a drama. It's a slasher. It's just, and and it's trying to send a message. And that's the sad thing because it's you, a, whatever message you right. were trying to send is just lost in a shit movie. Right. Yeah. Which is sad because they, <laughs> there should be, um, the, you could pull that off really well. Yes. Um, and if you did it right, yeah. And they did not. They had a good premise. They had really good, almost, and then, and then they just fucking failed. Yeah. And then, like, I did like some of the the kids were good. The acting. Yeah, some of the act the acting was a, a lot of fun from a few characters. Except our main, I I didn't think our main actor did a good job at all. I think like some of the best acting came from the the. The supporting cast. Yeah, yeah, there was, I there, agree for sure. But it just. It, yeah, I mean, Kevin was, Kevin Bacon always like brings it, but he, he did. It, mm -hmm. But he didn't have anything to work with, and he's been like picking bad horror movies. Lately. He has been picking like the bad last horror. like three four years. He does a horror film. It's never that good. I think he's like made like the worst one like last year, the year before. Right. Um. Yeah. This movie like it's a. Uh, I guess the what's the premise? It's a what's the camp? What the kind of camp is that called? It's, it's a conversion conversion camp. camp. Yeah, which is fucked up. And just to start with, that's yeah. fucked up. Yeah, yeah. So you have that fucked up premise, and then you could really do something with that. I know. And then having a killer because you're putting kids through conversion camp, which is fucked up, and all those parents yeah. are going to hell. Just FYI. And then. Yeah, and then they just fall so flat. I know because it because it. it starts with this tense drama thing, and then it keeps. Yeah, it's then a musical number in the middle of it was so bizarre. It really was super uh, bizarre. I, that really like, that's where it for sure lost me. Oh yeah. Oh, and, and and like the score, the choices they picked for music <laughs> was the worst music score I've uh, musical choices in a film that I've seen in a while. That yes. so went against it. I just uh, this this was a rushed film made i think just because it's popular right like the topic the subject in in american zeitgeist pronouns right gender fluidity gender identity and i think they wanted Which to capitalize on very it. disappointing that yeah. they didn't pull it off because it could have been yeah really good if they would have took their time and picked a tone and did it right <laughs> i know and maybe <laughs> actually showed some kills yeah yeah and, and the thing is like the kills the off-screen kills didn't start no kills happened until like the last 20 minutes of the right? film either that's so dumb it was yeah. just so fucking stupid and it was uh, yeah uh, but there was a beat and there was a moment that got us both in there we were like oh we didn't see that coming right do you remember it the, s no. the seduction part. Oh, yes. That, okay, that little twist yeah. was like, that's fucked up. I, I say that because we're going to lead into our worst film of the year, <laughs> which <laughs> we won't get into it yet. It didn't have anything. It didn't have any moments. It had nothing. None, no so, moments. So let's move on to the f number one. And before we say what it is, I just want to say uh, on record <laughs> <laughs> that... But uh, from the the years that we've been doing this podcast, the three years, yes, I believe that this is the worst of our worst films. I agree. I fucking agree. And I think that this is the worst horror film that I've seen 
in a very very long time yes <laughs> um and so that being said should we should we say what it is we should all right the worst film of the year possibly of the last three years is jeepers creepers reborn that what i don't it's i don't know what it was <laughs> It was fucking trash. It was a fucking shit show trash. What the <laughs> motherfuck did you do? Okay. A, the first Creeper, Jeepers Creepers is such a good movie. It is. So, yes. Yes. Leaving leaving the director leaving out of it. Leaving the director out of it. His stuff. And his stuff. Yeah. If you you if you just block that out and pretend he doesn't exist, it is the, such a great. The first film is great. It's stellar. The, the Creeper himself is fucking cool and terrifying and if, it's great. If you've never seen the first one, it's such a fun ride to take because you don't really know what he is. Right. In the beginning, you think it's a person. Spoilers for the original Jeepers Creepers. But then you're slowly discovering that, oh, that might not be what it is. And then the second one was a lot of fun. And then they made the third one and that was so shitty. That was so and bad. And so when they, this went to a new director. This isn't Victor right. Salva anymore. So you're like, oh, okay. someone else is grabbing it. They're going to do something new with it. You have the Creeper, which and is really really cool there's no way it can be worse than the third one right and they made it worse they did it oh my they trumped that shit oh so, my so, god so there's only two positives i have about this you have a positive yes okay hear me out All right. the only positive i have is me you and james watched it and the entertainment we got by saying to each other what the fuck is this <laughs> okay that, i agree with that it was yes. so bad that we were like what What's what? happening? What the the sky isn't moving? What what did she say? What what's happening right, right. now? <laughs> this is terrible. Um, and the other positive was uh, the main actress's outfit towards the, the the later half was sexy. That was it. That was yeah. that's that's my positive. Her little montage in in, in dressing up in different characters. That uh, that yeah, was it. Yeah, that was it. So this has. Across the board, there's nothing good about this. From the ground up, it's a terrible script. It's it's horrific casting with zero chemistry. They do green screen in this that looks like uh, someone fucking did it in their garage. The green screen in this is awful. The creeper design is new, and he looks so dumb. He looks horrible. The, the director of photography is out of their fucking mind, whoever it is, because they lit nighttime shots bright as shit. Purple. Like, like and it's purple. Oh, oh yeah. So, it was so purple. The exterior night is purple, purple green screen skies. And as James pointed out, the, the clouds don't move. The it's clouds? just a static right. background. It's static. And then they're in a house at night with no electricity. And yet that shit is. And they are blasting lights like a motherfucker. That in this house. shit is bl blaring with light. Yes. Through the holes of the house. It, it made no sense. Um, and and the ending death of okay so if you've seen Jeepers Creepers you know that he is you they haven't killed him he's very difficult to kill right um, the only time I think he, I can't remember how three ends but the only he was defeated in two by just going into hibernation right because like he, you cut off his arm it grows years. back I even think they fucked up his head and it grows back if he right. eats body parts so for this like the final death is like they put a spike through him. And and like you, you, you're, you're supposed to think that he's not dead. Oh, it's just so the chemistry was so awful. Uh, the chemistry with the, the like there's a, a, a the boyfriend and the girlfriend, <laughs> and they're so not the, driving. In, he she, <laughs> he wants to go to a horror convention, and she's like, "This is the stupidest shit. This is this." And he's like, oh, "This is the one. I'm gonna marry her." No, spoiler alert! If she does not like horror movies, like you like horror movies, and talks like that to you while you love your yeah. horror movies, then you do not fucking marry her. Yeah. No, I've been in those places. No, it is not fun. You should have someone that loves it just as much as you do, or at least enjoys you enjoying it. Yeah. And she was just a fucking cunt throughout the whole thing with him. Yeah. Yeah. It, it just there's so they had no chemistry, and he's like, "I'm going to marry this one." Zero, zero chemistry, and there's like, God, there's this moment in the film where um, there's a group of people, right? And then they 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 split up to go investigate stuff. One person dies, then they kind of meet back up, and they see the dead body. Mm -hmm. And one person goes to the dead body and says, "Oh, this is a fresh kill." 
okay, so only like five, maybe 10 minutes have passed in this event. So what, and he was just alive five minutes ago. Yeah, you just so, saw him. So why is it a fresh, what constitutes a non-fresh kill to you? Like it's been five minutes. Of course it's a fresh kill. If it's been a half hour, it's still a fresh he kill. He just went around the corner, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's stuff like that. It's so bad. And the, the the green screen effects are so fucking awful. There's a scene where at the end where cop oh cars God. pulls up. Those were all and fake it, cops. And it looks like, the the cars are just sitting on a slope. It was just it was bad. It, it didn't even it look like so they were bad. real cops. No, they were no. like green screen cops. I, I I don't understand any how this got made. I don't understand where where there was how there was money because every step of the way nothing worked, and I don't see how in your head you think any of this is going to work none of it works i no. think it sits at like a 2.0 rating on imdb it should and, be and, lower than that because and, and, that is the trashiest movie i've ever seen first it just and and, and so you, what? you 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 have you're picking up a franchise and you all have a responsibility to make it good right Right. You have a responsibility to carry it on. And so it's not like you're making your own original thing where, okay, I can see like if this was not Jeepers Creepers, okay, maybe it's a three three instead of, you know, a two. It still sucks, but you're doing it. But it's still bad. It's you, still bad. You took Jeepers Creepers, yeah. which did need a new director and a mm. new place to go because it is such a, like, yeah. he's a great character. And now you've just... Ruined the entire. You just ruined it. Yep. I think they did it. So like, no, no more Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if that's how they did it, then they have my applause. If they did it under the guise to just destroy the franchise because of what Victor Salva did, right? If that was their motive, then then I bravo. I, I applaud that was you. Fucking uh, shit. But on the other hand, no, because you took my money. Right. So, yeah. So don't go see this. Don't yeah. see it. Don't give them any money. Yeah. It is yeah. not worth your fucking time. Jeepers Creepers Reborn is is just so it's bad. The it's the shittiest movie that we've seen in a very. We've seen a lot of shitty movies. Yeah, yeah. We have sat through so many shitty movies. Yeah. This one was like. Well, it has nothing redeeming like Men. You can say Men is directed well. Men is tonally consistent. It was men has some good shot. acting. Jeepers Creepers. None of that. You can say They Them has some good ideas. It has some good acting from characters. There's a few moments that caught us off guard. Right. None of that in Jeepers Creepers Reborn. None. It's just a piece of shit. It is. The Thanks biggest Killing piece of... 3 is better than Jeepers Creepers oh, Reborn. Oh, for the love of fuck. <laughs> if you've seen that, then that's. I mean, that one was a trip for sure. Midsummer is better than this. <laughs> and you know, and... you've listened to us before. We fucking hate oh, that movie. <laughs> yeah. So. That's. Uh, do you have anything else you want to say about Jeepers Creepers? Um, I never want to think or see or have to deal with that again. And I will just keep number one in my heart and I'll watch that one and pretend all the other ones don't exist. Yeah. Well, you want to get into some honorable mentions that didn't I really do. make our list. So, yes. So, so like for like the um, best films of the year, do you have any honorable mentions that didn't make top five? Um, yes. I really enjoyed. Um, I did enjoy the Texas Chainsaw. Okay. Uh, reboot mostly because I we talked about it when it came out, but mm. mostly I like because it felt like Bubba got his groove back and like he got on a bus and the bus scene where he kills all those people is fucking great, and then him just like he's been not killing for thirty years and then he gets to just bust out and he got his groove back and I love that. Yeah, I love yeah. that so much and yeah. I fall asleep to that one on occasion. So <laughs> I do like that one. I can see that. I can I can see that. I think you liked it a little bit more than me, but that one falls like in the middle of like an average film we saw this year. Right. And I mean, this is a discussion that we've had. So Prey, which oh. is kind of like a more of a sci-fi, mm. really. It is a creature, yeah. alien. Mm. Um, so for that, we couldn't put it on the list because for us, that's not really a horror movie. Yeah. But some people might think it is. And I do. I really enjoyed no, that Prey, one a lot. Prey was good. And, you know, I can get into this in a little bit, but I just don't think it belongs in the category of horror. Right. Yeah. And Pearl. Yeah. I liked Pearl. Um, I, it was beautiful. I It brought in his love of movies. It was like Wizard of Oz it was, it was meets Psycho. <laughs> like a little Psycho. Technically amazing. Yes, it, it really was. It looked beautiful, shot beautiful, acted, acted well, but there was nothing that you didn't 
expect to happen happen. Exactly. Like you knew what was going to happen. There was no surprises. Right. Um, it was some cool moments, some great acting. All that stuff was good. But it wasn't like X where you didn't really know what was going on. Right. Like you knew there's there was no surprise. None. And you, yeah. you, it was just like the backstory. So like for me, I was like, the, this person's yeah. been killing her whole life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So getting to see that was fun. Um, but it didn't make the list because there were so many be better yeah. ones for yeah. us out there. Um, you know, I just have one honorable mention. I, there was a lot, uh, you know, in between, but um, I really wanted to put Orphan First Kill on the list. You did? Yeah. I, I love that film. Um, I, I think there was like in the mid middle of the film, it takes a turn that I didn't see coming, that you Agreed. didn't see coming. I think it's a perfectly packaged film. It's not that long. You have some good kills. Mm -hmm. It's a fun story. It moves along. It's entertaining. And that's kind of everything I want in a horror film. Um, I was sad that we couldn't put it on the list, but you know we, we have to make some some concessions and right and some um, compromises. Yeah, so uh, if you haven't seen Orphan First Kill, give it a give it a try. It's a lot of fun. It is, and, a lot it, fun. and if you're a fan of the original Orphan, then this you're gonna like this one a lot. Yeah, yeah. it was nice to we had watched <laughs> so many shitty ones we did not like. Yeah, and then this one was one of the last ones we had watched, and it was it was entertaining. It was, yeah, yeah. and the twist you're like, holy shit! I know, I didn't see that cool. coming at all. Yeah, especially from uh, Julia Stiles, right? <laughs> so, um, I agree, it was good. Yeah, I just like the some others better. Yeah, well, it's uh, any, thanks for like, compromising. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> uh, that's what we do here with this marriage compromise. <laughs> compromise. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what do you uh, any honorable mentions for worst films? Because I I have just one I want to say. Uh, Mine is um, Smile, <laughs> and and I just want to say, fuck Smile. Nothing else. Fuck that movie. Okay, what do you got? <laughs> um, So mine was actually Barbarian, mm. because I got so mad, and that movie made me <laughs> so mad. Like, I spent a lot of time being like, what the fuck? What are you doing? Jesus fucking Christ. That, oh, my God. How are you alive? How are you fucking alive right, right now? Because you're so fucking stupid. Yeah. What is happening? Oh, my God. I was so I, mad. I agree. I agree that that main character was so infuriating. Oh. And what's interesting is Barbarian has made, like, number one and, like, in the top of, like, you know, big outlet lists of best horror films, like Bloody Disgusting, Pick Barbarian, Dread Central, Pick Barbarian is their number one. But I want to talk about Barbarian, me personally, in a little bit. But... Yes, I can see why you would put it on a, on a worse Ugh. worse list. I can see it was it. my honorable mention because yeah. there was it it wasn't worse than the top five that we watched, yeah. but it made me so mad, and I just fuck it, fuck that, fuck her, like all of it. <laughs> I was so pissed watching that movie. Yeah, Ugh. I don't. Part of me understands why people like it, but I really... I mean, I get it. She has zero survival skills, that lady. So but but then, she did but then survive. She, she survived, but, but I But also, like, what the fuck? Yeah. What? She survived. Mm, I, mm, well, mm. how about this? Let's change it to uh, this year. Well, we're going to do who we think our best actor, best actress, best director, and some of our favorite kills are. All right. So, um, best actor. Who are we giving it out to? Ethan Hawke. Ethan Hawke. Yeah. yeah. I think he did a, a great job at, in uh, the Black Phone. He was creepy. He was creepy. He was really fucking creepy. Right. He he was. He oh, and, so and, that was so good for coming from him. Yes. Because like for me, that is something I hadn't seen out of him. Yeah. So he just oh I, yeah. I know that's true. And I think was it in the seventies or was, or eighties eighties seventies? I can't remember. 70s um, or 80s, late yeah. 70s, early but 80s. But he, he does a really good job, or he did a really good job at showing emotion behind masks. But yes. I also do know that the masks were designed to represent the emotions. So some have smiles, some have frowns. Right. And that helps in it. But aside from that, his his he did a really good job at emoting behind masks with his, his body did. language. And, you know, he was talking nice to the boy. The tone. And then he'd get angry. Mm -hmm. And then he'd be friendly. And he was really good at switching around his tones. Well, and and his... just the voice, the, the voice itself mm. was. Yeah. Was, even if, when he was being nice, it was still creepy. You yeah. know, it still had the underline of creep. Yeah. So he pulled that off really fucking well. Yeah. And I really and, and, enjoyed and that And the a choice, lot. too, I think, you know, it takes a certain kind of actor to pick a role where. You're predominantly in it, but your face isn't. I think you see his face just a couple times. Right. 
You know, I think the most you see his face is uh, in the beginning when he's got. Did he have makeup on? But he, he still su- had sunglasses. makeup on. Yeah, he had makeup on and, and then sunglasses. He, you on. see part of his face. Um, yeah, no, he did a really great job. Um, best actress of the year. Uh, this one was hard because there was a lot, um, and I wanted like a contenders were the lady from Terrifier Two. Yes, the main actress, mm-hmm. um, Jenna Ortega from a lot of stuff. But we landed on. Mia Goth. Yeah, she did a really good job of X and Pearl because she plays different characters. She plays three different, well, two. Two, but but three, three. different performances, right. really. And um, we didn't know, I, did we just say this? We didn't know it was her in X until um, afterwards. Right. And her screams are great. Oh, she's really, she's really, really great. So her I'm like excited scream to cries see... are just disturbing. They are. Yeah. I'm excited to see what she does in the future in horror. Well, the next one she's going to do is Maxine, the third one in this trilogy, which, which is awesome. Which I'm excited to see her go off in in the in the 80s, 70s, 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 and become a porn star in the yeah. city. I don't know what where they're going to take that. Are they going to turn her into a murderer or not, or what's going to happen? So that's interesting. It but is. But she she was really good. She she was a standout for sure. She was. But a there huge were a standout. lot of a lot of female actresses. The females this year in horror were kicking some ass, which makes me happy. Mm-hmm. And who yeah. we, who did we land on for best director? Uh. Ty T West. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, technically amazing. His films X and Pearl were an achievement in horror. And I told you this today that I think he's going to get picked up by something bigger. I think mm-hmm. if that's just a bigger horror, where like say he gets to do Nightmare on Elm Street remake, or I can really see this guy getting s- scooped up by fucking Star Wars or DC or something like that. Right. And, you know, go- kinda, going into the big leagues. I kind of hope he doesn't. Yeah. I kind of hope he stays. You know, doing he, this stuff like this I, that you think, know that he loves because you yeah. can see that he loves it. Yeah. And what um, I would like to see from him if he does is uh, a gritty crime, I think would be fun. Oh, yeah. He would do that, I think, well. Like Brawl yeah. on Cell Block 66. Is that what it's oh. called with Vince Vaughn? Something, that was something, great. something like that where yeah. he, he keeps that style. But, uh, you yeah. Know. Yeah. No, he he knocked it out of the park this year. What about sure. What about favorite kills of the year? Do you have any? Well, and Scream, and it's very, it's not even like, it's not super gory, but I love when they put the knife. That's one of mine. In Wes's neck, and it just, you just see the that's, practical, you just see it, and it's beautiful. That's one of my favorite it's kills. fucking like, beautiful. Two of my favorite kills of the year come from Scream, and the other one was when they, they got rid of the legacy character. That the, was a great. That kill was well, pretty was gnarly. was pretty gnarly and yeah. pretty great. And uh, I did enjoy um, the bus scene on Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw. That was such a great had scene. Had some good, really great kills no matter what you think of the film. I might, well, My favorite, other favorite I was going to say is the ending head cut off. Yes. Was great. And the bus scene was really cool too. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of fun things this year. There was I know. A lot of, there was some shit. Yeah, there, there was some shit. We watched some shit. Yeah. But- there was a lot of fun this year, and I'm I'm excited to see what or not this year for 2022. I'm excited to see what what's gonna happen in 2023. Yeah, well, I would like to speak briefly about just some films that didn't make the list that aren't really honorable mentions or anything, and kind of like how you were saying, we didn't really consider Prey to be a horror film. I I, I saw it more of as an action sci fi film, yeah. and the same goes for Nope. But really, more with Nope, a lot of people are saying that that's a horror and it's making a lot of horror lists. But I, it's not a horror film. It's a sci fi film. It's a mystery. It's an adventure film. There's like a horrific. There's horrific moments like with the monkey stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I was telling you the. The moments of horror, mostly in the core film, I thought were f- fucking hilarious. Right when people were getting abducted, I thought just this is funny because why? Why are you standing below a fucking UFO thing? Right, like you should be scared. You and should. The be. fact that you're like screaming in terror now is fucking hilarious. Well, that's what you get. Right, like, you don't you're know like, what it is. Get out of there. Exactly, you idiots. They had some. I really enjoyed Nope. Nope was good. It was. No, it was, it was really, really good. good. It's just not a horror film. I think it, for Jordan Peele, his three films, this is my second, fa- second favorite one he did. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I really think Nope should have... Okay, it, if I was doing this film, I would have turned it PG-13. Mm-hmm. Maybe PG. And I would have leaned into Spielberg is what because you, you feel Spielberg in this film for sure mm-hmm. with like E.T. and Close Encounters. And I would have made the main characters children. 
And I would have, and, and it would have been the same kind of idea of you have this group of kids and they know this thing is out there and they're trying to get the evidence. Right. And you can keep the same other subplots of, you know, these kids are from the family of the ranchers, mm -hmm. the black ranchers that, you know, provide the horses for Hollywood. And maybe it's because you could do a Goonies thing. It could right. be Goonies to where like the ranch is failing and they want to help dad right. by getting a photo of, of a UFO. Yeah. So then they have to go through this process of finding cameras and they have to convince a DP. Right. So there's a, like if you were telling me to make this film, I would have made it Goonies with children. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it was really good, though. It was good, it, but yeah. yeah, for us, not a horror movie. Um, So there's some surprises. Like, there's some that I thought would have made our worst list. Like, from everything I heard of the monsters, like, all the bad reviews. Right. And uh, just seeing the trailer. And then we watched it, and we're like, it's not that bad. It was... We were surprised. Yeah. Is, is it super great? No. No, it's not. Do but I it, love that he has his wife as Lily Munster? Fuck no. She just... Laughed. Please stop. But we laughed and we it was entertaining. Yeah, I, I truly expected that to be on our list, but it wasn't. And this is kind of a thing too where it, it, it could definitely have... It helped with a 20 minute edit. Like you could shave 20 minutes off of it. Right. Um, But he did embrace his budget. I, I mean, everything is like silly but good. Um, I liked the performances overall. I thought it was a fun time. But then again, I come from, I never watched the Munsters growing up. So See, I don't, I, did. I don't hold any nostalgia for it. Um, so that probably helped in my favor to liking it a little bit more right. than the general public. I, you know, I thought <clears throat> Gramp, the person that you have as grandpa was like stellar. Yeah. And it was just, a fun, it was fun. Like, it didn't quite give you the. It did not give you the feel of the TV show. Yeah. Um. Because I'd watch the TV show. I love the TV mm. show. Um. It didn't really. It. It really didn't give you that feel. Yeah. But it was still. That's interesting. Entertaining. Yeah. Gotcha. And like you said, we were like, oh god. I think we put it off and put it off. We did. And then we're like, okay, let's just watch it. And we're like, oh, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I, I don't was, hate there, this. There was some dad joke funny moments. Right. In there. Yeah. Um, another one that I was surprised that didn't make our worst list was Halloween Ends. <laughs> <laughs> we were expect. I was truly expecting that to be like number one this year. Um, I'm sure you were too. But then we went and saw it, and we we're like, "This is the best one of his trilogy." It was, yeah. I my bar was so fucking low; it was in the right. ground, ten feet down, and so. <laughs> we thought this would be like the the crowning king of the shit this right. year. Right, and wasn't. I was so mad at two, mm. and I still get mad at two. So I was pleasantly surprised that I wasn't so rage filled when I yeah. left the theater. So yeah, and it sits in the middle. But you know, just just want to say, as like a Halloween film in general, I think this is still average. Yeah, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but it didn't make our list. Um, and then you were talking about Barbarian earlier. I want to talk about it a little bit. And to me, Barbarian kind of falls in the same vein as uh, The Deep House that we reviewed last year where it had this amazing premise. The Deep House was underwater oh, right. haunting. But then you get introduced to your characters and they're so yeah. annoying and you don't give a shit about them. Right. And that was like kind of what I felt with Barbarian to where I love the premise. The directing was really good. I can't wait to see what this guy does next because mm -hmm. this is his first horror film. He comes from comedy. Um, the, the premise was cool. I like how they do a lot of showing and no telling. Are you okay over there? Our dog is like... <laughs> no, just don't pay attention to him. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> she has this thing where if he's like cleaning himself, it really grosses her out. It's oh, so it's hilarious. Well, we're like... He's just grooming. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, what was I talking about? Oh, I like how this movie does a lot of showing and not telling. Like you see cages... Um, you see certain things, but you don't. They don't explain it. So you make up like these events that have happened right. over the years in your head. And I thought that was really clever. But like you're talking about, our lead character is so infuriating, and I didn't like the decision she was making. Simple things like if you're going to go into a dark, deep fucking room in the house that you're, you don't know it's in the middle of a rundown area. Take something with you. Take, take something take, with you. Take a brick. Take take a rock. Anything, grab grab a weapon. Don't I, just go down there by you like. Hey, I want to. I want to say room? a spoiler, but I, like. <laughs> okay, so can I just? We're gonna do a spoiler alert small, for Barbarian. So if you haven't watched it, she's gonna spoil. Just come back in a minute. Right. So if you're in a strange house and you lock in a basement in a creepy ass neighborhood where there's only one house that's the house that you're in, and there's a hit, there's a rope that comes out of the fucking wall. Don't pull on the rope. <laughs> Don't pull on it. Yeah. If you, she would have not pulled on the fucking rope, like 
why would you pull on it? And then you're like, keep going. Yeah. And then you you go to explain it to the other person in the house and you're like, there's a bed and a bucket. There's a bed and a bucket in a room? That's a, no, 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 no. <laughs> you explain that there is a hidden room yes. with a rope that you pulled and a concrete fucking wall that then you go down and the, there's blood and, and there's a camera and there's a there more to you don't just go to the person no. and be like there's a bed and a bucket in a hidden room and he's like okay and oh oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah i was gonna i was gonna say when she went to the cops she should have just said someone someone was murdered go to the house right i, I just witnessed a murder please go check it's in this room and I, I, even if it's a lie or not then they have to go right like there's yeah. so many things but like just the i mean <laughs> what is this rope coming out of a concrete wall? I should pull it. And well, then it opens. Well, no, bitch, get out. What also bothered me is like she opens the door and then she goes about the room to create a light source. Like she she finds a mirror and she angles it correctly over, over the light and she props it up with all these things. But you don't have the wherewithal to grab a thing. Something to protect yourself like with? a pipe. Anything? Anything to go Anything in the room, yeah. Um, anything at all uh justin long was really good he i was, like i liked his character if i, I would have rather of him lived at the end he, than her yeah even just, though he's like a piece of shit i think that would have been a fun angle that he got away with it and then you could say a little message about hollywood how people get away with things right um i love how he just threw her off the roof that was that's my favorite part i'm like yes you're gonna kill her finally and then he's uh, like i you slipped i know that was great the bitch i didn't slip uh, but anyways, end spoilers. Um, All right, sorry, I had to have my little rant. I had to. I fucking hated that movie. Made yeah. me so mad. Um, maybe briefly about. I mean, God, this year it was really good for horror, and especially in television. Um, there was some great stuff. Like Wednesday was really cool, even though it's not full horror. It's in the world of horror. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like horror, Harry Potter, Stranger um, Things. Stranger Things is fucking amazing. Uh, we just started watching the Cabinet of Curiosities. We just watched one from there. We keep watching that, but. Um, there's a lot too in TV horror that we just there's so much to watch that we right. miss. Like I, I do want to watch Chucky the series, um, stuff like that. But tele like th- television and movies, it's right? Good stuff. I love that we're getting more horror television. Yeah, um, and that kind of leads into like the biggest thing I'm most excited for in next year is Friday or this the, year, Friday the third. Yeah, this year it's 2023 yeah, it now. <laughs> Friday the thirteenth is coming uh, as a yes. series, and we haven't had anything in over a decade, so I'm very excited for that. Um, other things next year, we have Evil Dead Rise. That yes. trailer looks awesome. We got Scream Six coming. Um, what else is a, a new Saw? We have like Saw Ten. Nope, fuck we, that. We have a new in- Insidious coming. We have the Exorcist remake, um, and probably a whole bunch more that I'm forgetting about. Yeah, I'm excited to see where they go. I'm excited to see. Um, I'm really intrigued to see where Scream goes. Yeah, I, the two on top of my list are Scream Six and Evil Dead Rise. Like those are the right the top um, for sure. Yeah, and I'm, and Friday the Thirteenth, the series, whatever Camp Crystal Lake, whatever they're going to call it. Yeah, it's I'm only excited a to the time see before what we get they go through Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> <laughs> just do it better. For the love of fuck, you better do it better. Uh, I wouldn't That's all mind, I have to say. I wouldn't mind another Texas Chainsaw. I, I wouldn't either. So Bubba got his groove back. Yeah. And then keep killing it. All right. Well, all right. That was that was 2022. All right. That's a wrap up. What did you think? Did yeah. you right? did you agree with us? Did you think we were fucking crazy? What? Yeah. What, what, what's your favorite film of 2022? And what's your worst film of 2022? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. And uh, like I said, support us at www.bloodymarriedpodcast.com. Amazon wish list, or you can buy some merch. Um, yeah. So our Bloody Marys are dead. So are we. All right. All Drink right. in moderation. Bye bye. See ya. The Bloody Mary Podcast.